me and you, and you and me No matter how they toss the dice It had to be, the only one for me is you Something's gone wrong in the happy-go-lucky world of Nintendo Introducing Super Smash Brothers, where all your favorite characters go toe-to-toe -to -toe in one four-player star-studded slam fest, only on Nintendo 64. The 90s were weird, but at the same time, I miss these kinds of commercials. There wouldn't be a more influential franchise than Super Smash Bros. From being invested in Nintendo's history with Brawl, to playing with our cousins with Melee, to playing Ultimate with our cousins, Smash has always been a part of my life and I'll always be grateful for that. But before that we must see how Smash originally came to be. In a world where most fighting games were trying to be like Street Fighter 2, Kirby creator Masashiro Sakurai programmed a prototype along with Satoru Iwata programmed a prototype known as Dragon King the Fighting Game. While you couldn't dodge in it, there weren't any special moves, there wasn't even any items. But the core rules of Smash were still there. The purpose of this prototype was to essentially make fighting games less input based and more skill based. The screams they do when they fall off is hilarious. Alright, alright, now we're just wasting time. Let's move on to the first game. Surprisingly, for this being the first game, the controls are actually pretty identical to the later entries, with the exception of Final Smashes. We'll get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. First off, the single player. You know classic mode from the later entries? This is pretty much 64's single player. You choose a character, you face off against multiple characters, 
Rinse and repeat. Look, as much as I enjoyed this, it can be a little repetitive, and there's really not much to it outside of that. But if you play with friends, oh boy, you prepare yourself for it. No, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me! <laughs> Oh, I was gonna say broken friendship, but that works too. As you can guess, the multiplayer is fun, frantic, and chaotic, all in one package. So unless you end up breaking your friendship, you and your buddies will have a fun time. The controls may be slower and may be sluggish, but at the end of the day, I'll always be grateful for starting a franchise I will always love. Like I said at the start of the video, Melee was the one our cousins from the US had, along with a few others for GameCube. And I'm just gonna tell you right here, right now, this is far better than 64. I mean, not the best in the entire series, what are you guys crazy, but a huge improvement overall. The single player mode in Melee, now named Classic Mode, is basically the same as it was in the previous game. But now you also have All Stars, a mode where you choose one character and beat up all the others. Okay, speaking of characters, I forgot to mention that in 64 you could unlock characters, but the reason I didn't mention was because you could only unlock four. In this game, however, you can unlock a buttload of new characters. The controls are more refined, less sluggish, and more faster. This game also introduced clone fighters. <sighs> Can we talk about how in 64 in this game, Luigi's voice was Mario's but high pitched? That always frustrated me. Target range and home run contest are also here. Multi man melee and event matches have you fight in circumstances. Adventure mode had you going to a different Nintendo world. It was pretty fun. As you can see, the single player is nothing short of things to do, but there's also the multiplayer, and that's even crazier and wackier. Soundtrack is also a huge step up. So overall, even though it's not my favorite, it's a huge step up from the first game.
Not only was Brawl my first gateway into the Nintendo history, but it was also my first time learning about other Nintendo characters that wasn't just Mario or Kirby. It was also the first game to not be developed at HAL Laboratory, but instead at Sora Limited. This is also the game to introduce Subspace Emissary. In concept, it was really freaking awesome! A single player mode with a story that's basically like the Avengers but for video games? Hell yeah! Except it ends up being more like Batman vs Superman. Okay, to be fair, it's not that bad, but it could have been handled a lot better. It could have tried to flesh out and give us motives be behind characters' actions like why is Wario and King DDD and Bowser turning and collecting people into amiibos. Or maybe fleshed out the characters a little more and given them more personality. You know, general stuff like that. But what I found disappointing the most about this mode is the fact that the actual playable stuff are so long, drawn out, and boring. And they p copy and paste the same enemy all over the stage. So you get a bunch of them massacring you. Subspace Atmosphere could have been a whole lot more, but instead, it's just a relic of a game left to be forgotten about. Seriously though, when are we gonna get that Smash Bros movie? I really want one. And as for the multiplayer, it might be slower, there's tripping for some reason, but it's still just as fun as the previous games. Break the target wasn't so lucky however, being downgraded in this game. And the graphics is colorless and feels like it's entering its edgy phase. That still didn't really stop me from having lots of fun with this game. Even if I prefer Melee a little more. The final smashes are here, brilliant, and well designed. Some of them are straight up not good, but that's only for Jigglypuff. Okay, so this version along with the 3DS version are the only ones I initially did not get. And looking back, I kinda regret that. The roster is so incredible. Like who would have guessed Pac-Man and Mega Man would have been here? Or Ryu? Or Cloud? Or Flippin' Bayonetta? It just screams all kinds of insane and I love it. Anyway, each version has a different interpretation of classic mode. The 3DS version has this map where you can choose different paths. 
to see how you progress. It's unique, but it's still enjoyable. The Wii U version, on the other hand, it's all a bunch of random fights just for the sake of being random. Ghibli, 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 Ghibli. <coughs> I'm sorry. The multiplayer is as fun as always, and there's now 8 players. It's a little bit much for me, personally. And here's where my bias for the 3DS version begins. Sure, they both have extra content, but the extra content in the 3DS version, like Smash Run, is way better than Smash Tour. I mean, sure, the Wii U looks gorgeous for it being the first Smash game in HD, but graphics are always everything. Well, we made it. The most recent game and my personal favorite. As per tradition, we start off with the single player mode, where this time a bunch of sadder creatures consume our favorite characters with their beam, except for the pink puffball. So it's up to Kirby to not only save the others, but also save the world. It's a pretty simple story, but it's not that bad. Where it struggles and fumbles is in its execution. What we have here is another version of the 3DS classic mode. Except this time you fight spirits version of characters. You're a lot more open to explore as opposed to the subspace emissary. And if you win certain battles, you get to unlock that character. In the same way as fighters, you can also unlock the spirits. You can equip your character with a spirit. And they have benefits such as increasing stats, strength, speed, all that stuff. If you want a smaller, less repetitious version of this mode, I definitely recommend Spirit Board. You do the same thing as the single player mode, except it's in smaller increment. Battles appear every 5 minutes and the higher the, the spirit's class, the more you get rewarded for freeing it. Classic mode is back and each character has their own path with characters they fight that in some way relate to them. There's also these bonus games that are like a combination of race to the finish and trophy bus. But they're a little bit stale and repetitious for me. But in the multiplayer, it's really wild. King K. Rool, Joker, Simon Belmont, and Richter Belmont? 
Banjo Kazooie and Sora from Kingdom Hearts are in the same game, no less. And the fact that the controls are at its most tightest and snappiest not only makes this one of the best multiplayers, but one of the best games in the series. But wow, that was a lot. Honestly, though, even if I already said the best of best praise for the series, it feels like I still haven't said enough good things. That's how much I love this franchise. Thank you so much for watching and take care.